So recently it was announced that Devin Haynes got to go back to Australia, fight George Cambosis again to defend his undisputed titles in a fight that he pretty clearly won, but the rematch clause is the rematch clause, right? But here's the issue, and this is what we got to discuss. Devin Haney recently said that he deserves to be considered one of the sports greats after unifying the lightweight division. Is it too soon for Devin Haney to say that he should be considered one of the greats already? I mean, the kid's not even 25, but he is the undisputed lightweight champion of the world. Where do we draw the line on greatness when it comes to boxing? It is far too soon. It's far too soon. For, for me, this is, this is it's about a body of work that you put together over a period of time. That's how you claim to be a great of the sport. And there will be some defeats in there, most likely. It doesn't matter. It, it's about staying at that highest possible level, taking the best possible fights and proving yourself over a period of time. So even though he's undisputed champion, what we've had quite a bit of recently is... Um, so... Lopez beat Lomachenko, obviously. Um, Cambosis beats Lopez, which for me made him undisputed champion because we all know that Lomachenko really was the WBC champion. And Haley beat Cambosis and he becomes undisputed champion. You don't become a great fighter by winning all of those belts in one fight. That that's not that's not how this works for me. You've then got to hang on to them and take bigger fights, the best fights over a period of time. Um, so Haney's got quite a, a lot to do yet. I, I'm, I'm not saying he can't do it. I think the signs are that maybe he can do it, but beating the man doesn't make you, doesn't bed you in as, as an all-time great. That just, that just doesn't doesn't make sense to me at all. Because if it did, then Cambosis would be a great as well, wouldn't he? It, it, it's kind of how it works, right? Like, let's just say, I mean, <laughs> Do we consider James Buster Douglas one of the all-time greats for beating Mike Tyson? There you go. Do we consider... Look, I love Kenny Norton. Kenny Norton gave Muhammad Ali hell. But we do not talk about Kenny Norton as one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. He's up there, but he's not the greatest mm. for beating Ali. I mean, it's fascinating how... Yeah, how, one, one big win. Yeah. One big win doesn't a career make, does it? No, not at all. I think it is the body work. And I don't never want to disrespect David Haney because I think he's a tremendous fighter. And I think him going to Australia, taking a little bit less money to do what he did should be applauded. But kid, you got so much career left. And, and boxing is one of those sports where you can ruin your legacy the longer that you go on. You know, you can be an undisputed champion. Listen, Adrian Broner is a three division champion. Nobody's talking about Adrian Broner as one of the all-time greats. It's just that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about George Cambosis being one of the all-time greats. There's always going to be a caveat when it comes to that. But if you do it over time, I think that makes sense. So these two are fighting October 15th in Melbourne. Big fight. They're doing it at the Rod Laver Arena. I mean, it's in Cambosis' backyard. And Cambosis has gone on to say that if he loses again, he should consider retirement. When you hear a fighter say that, especially when it, it wasn't like the first fight was close, Devin Haney kind of just ran away with that fight. What do you think, what's going through the mind of George Cambosis to say I would consider retiring if I lost to a man who kind of wiped me out in the first fight? I don't know. Maybe he needs to say that kind of thing to, to motivate himself, to put himself under pressure. He's an interesting He's an interesting lad, Cambosis. I spent a bit of time with him when he came over to box Lee Selby. And there was nothing on his record at that point, really. But obviously, he'd done all the good sparring and, and stuff like that. Um, so we'd heard plenty about that. But you couldn't really get a handle on whether he had the ability level to beat Selby. But what I discovered during the week was that he 100% believed in himself. And it's quite easy, isn't it, when you're around fighters and teams for a few days to, to discover whether their confidence is real or not. Because um, you see them in unguarded moments and you get to speak to them when they're off the record and stuff like that and, and and I realise that his confidence is absolutely rock solid and real but I think the situation he finds himself in with Haney Cambosis is kind of in a way similar to one that, that Joshua found himself in with Usyk I don't think he can beat Haney Cambosis I think I think Haney's just better than him um, and I don't really see the day dawning where that won't be true so I don't think he's capable of beating Haney in the rematch unless Haney just has an absolute nightmare of a night but I think he's level-headed enough and just mature enough even though he's so young and good enough that that won't happen and I think honestly I think uh, 
I think a seven and a half out of 10 Haney beats Cambosis. Honestly, and I don't see his performance level slipping below that. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. I think Devin Haney having to travel out there is just pissing him off a little bit more. And I think he's just got, I mean, he knows what Cambosis has to offer. And I mean, let's be frank here. Cambosis didn't have a lot to offer Devin Haney in the first fight. And I think if, you, if you're Devin, you're looking at this fight as, you know, I put him on the end of my jab. I'm younger, I'm fresher, I already beat him once, but he's not gonna take this fight lightly because at the end of the tunnel is a fight with Vasily Lomachenko, which I think Devin Haney not only wants, but needs. You wanna talk about that legacy exactly. stuff? You wanna be considered one of the greats? That's the guy you gotta beat. George Cambosis ain't gonna do that for you. But Vasily Lomachenko, who is arguably the greatest amateur boxer we have ever seen, you beat that man? Yeah, we can have a conversation. We're still not there. You still got a lot of work to do, kid. But I, I, yeah, I'm with you on this. I think, you know, Devin Haney at 70% is still going to be George Cambosis. I don't see anything changing there. Uh, I don't know where George will go after this. I think he kind of goes where he was supposed to be in the first place. I never thought a healthy Tiafimo Lopez, I thought, would have beat him as well. I mean, you know, and say what you want about Tiafimo. Like, he had some health issues going into that fight that are pretty well documented. He had COVID and he still managed to get a split decision that some people thought he won. And he almost finished George in the late round. So it is what it is. I, I get it, George. You got to say what you got to say to hype yourself up. But I don't know if you believe at this point that you can beat Devin Haney. But I guess I guess we'll see. I guess we shall see.